The next item on this parade of insanity, the great debate, our next presidential feature between Chris Jericho, former mainstream wrestling star, and now s sadly out of shape, past his expiration date, canned ham on a game show, against pockets. And the debate got pyro, which actually was the most exciting part of it. And then they announced Bischoff as the moderator, and the announcers had to act surprised. We talked about this last week, right? Why were the announcers surprised? They, they should have listened to our show. Well, to be fair, we talked about it on the drive-thru. This show was taped last week. Well? So it was already in the can when we spoke about it on the show. Here's the problem. If they were stupid enough to let out in public who the the moderator was, then they shouldn't have been surprised on TV a week later. They either keep it a secret and they're surprised, or they know they're not going to keep it a secret and they're not surprised. They can't have it both ways. His Bischoff's graphic, did you read his graphic? I did not. I missed that. Pioneering wrestling executive. <laughs> I did not see that. No. How about guy who put the last company on this network out of business when they had 10 times the viewers we do now? Because that would have been true. You know, we have heard from some people who don't agree with you on that. Because obviously after Bischoff or in between Bischoff stints, there was Vince Russo. There was Kevin Nash booking. There were Time Warner executives who didn't want to have anything to do with wrestling anymore. It got canceled. But seriously, in all honesty, it comes to he's the guy that, that saved the company and he's the guy that tanked the company. He blurted out something out of his ass when, when he was lucky enough to get a meeting with Ted Turner. Well, you need to go to primetime head to head. And when he got it, he's like, oh, shit. Then he saw a fucking angle in Japan, an invasion angle, and was able to talk them into loosening the purse strings and signing some of Vince's stars. And that got him started. And then all he had to do was keep, take care of it. And they had the Goldberg phenomenon and they had every major star under contract. And he could have easily picked other people to be creative, but he didn't. And it was on, and he spent money like a drunken sailor and had all those shady deals done and those contracts and gave away pay-per-views so that he could ride his motorcycle. Did you see they're still going to have the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally? 250,000 people in a small town in fucking South Dakota in the middle of a pandemic. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Any, all those motorcycle fucks are pretty goddamn brain damaged too. Want to ride a goddamn motorcycle to fucking the middle of nowhere South Dakota. I'll take an air-conditioned uh, Ford Expedition, thank you very much. But Bischoff wanted to hang out with Nash and Hall because of the motorcycle thing and the big cigar thing, and it made him feel somehow manly. But anyway, no, it was Eric Bischoff's fault. He was the guy that got him into that, and then he was the guy that couldn't get him out of it because he wasn't smart enough about the wrestling business to be able to keep going what he had without fucking losing it. Some people are never lucky enough to get it. He was worse. He got it, and then he couldn't keep it. It's a whole lot easier to keep it when you've already got it than to get it in the first place. But he's a nitwit, and everybody that's dealt with him and worked with him, even if they're polite about it, is shocked and amazed by his lack of knowledge of wrestling. I'm never shocked and amazed by that. I know he doesn't know anything. So anyway, he says no one has seen the questions. Because they've been on Funk and Wagnall's porch since noon today. Pockets wandered out and rolled into the ring. Um, I, Jericho came out. I wrote MJF could have been out here getting over. But instead we've got this. Pockets put a clip on tie on his t-shirt. Jericho lied and said millions of morons follow pockets. So there's only a few hundred thousand and they are morons, but he overstated the case. Pockets wouldn't talk and had no response. Jericho, Jericho tried. He was really cutting a promo. I'm trying to make this entertaining. And it's, it's just a one note joke. This fucking clown. 
it's it it was old the first time you see it it gets older after that i know jericho doesn't need the money so that's why i think it's so embarrassing that a guy who's been at that level of star in this business agreeing to do this and not even needing the money for it i could understand if he bad investments he was broke he had sick family members but just doing this just because, you know, he wants to be a game show host next or whatever. I don't know. They stuck in a question on global warming so Pockets could recite in an unconvincing fashion an answer that he had memorized with no feeling. Uh, Jericho, again, knocked him, tried to save this. It went way too long. Finally, Pockets speaks seriously about Jericho. It was not worth the wait. He sounds like he looks, and that ain't good. Uh, I wrote he talks like a bored teenage girl in both tone and bass in his voice. Pockets told Jericho with a straight face. Well, his face is always straight. But Pockets told Jericho that next week would be the biggest match of Chris Jericho's life. And a bunch of people, well, not a bunch of people, because there ain't a bunch of people at home watching this shit, less than a million. But the less than a million people at home watching this, three quarters of them looked at each other and said, wait a minute, he's wrestled The Rock, Steve Austin, and The Undertaker. And next week is going to be the biggest match of his life, according to this fucking guy. This is why they're going to get free TV viewers and they're going to get their devoted fan base of masturbators from the basement to fucking watch. And nobody else is going to watch because it's just so honestly an insult to your intelligence. If he was out there with Cody or if he was out even with Moxley or if he was out there with Jericho, I mean, anybody that has had some kind of name and or recognition and or talent and or looks like something or some of few of the above, you could kind of get away with that because it's wrestling and people wouldn't be inclined to say, well, now wait a minute, he wrestled the rock and he wrestled Steve Austin because it's Cody or it's Moxley or it's fucking some name. They, they know, but this joke and they're trying to say that people are instantly going, okay, I don't believe anything else anybody in this program ever says, because that's just patently on the face of it ludicrous. And then the and the more the announcers try to back that up, then the less faith the people have in the announcers and the less they believe what the announcers say. And that's the reason you hired Jim Ross, because he's the one, one voice in wrestling that people believe. And now all he's doing is waiting to, to pitch to the picture in picture because it's the most exciting part of the fucking night. Because you're embarrassing him to say anything else because of the substandard talent that's on this program that he's having to call. So then uh, uh, Bitch Off declared Pockets the winner because of his global warming question. And Hager jumped pockets and stuck his pockets his hands in his own pockets and then threw him toward jericho and jericho knocked him out with the judas and like i said this left me feeling sad for chris jericho like i would have for the poor bella lugosi in an, an ed wood feature except those actually stood the test of time and have entertained a number of people over the years what'd you see once again, the raw test means this <laughs> sucked. I thought Eric Bischoff was the highlight. I think he's a great television performer. I know a lot of people just have the attitude, oh, he's from wrestling's past. He shouldn't be on the show, especially because there's so many others from wrestling's past. Well, no, I, th I thought it was somewhat a, a, kind of to the bone that he came back. Tony Khan is such a mark for the days of, of, Tuesday Nitro or Monday Nitro or the Thursday Dynamite. It was or, Monday. It was on it was, Monday's Nitro. Well, yeah, it was Monday Nitro <laughs> and Thursday Dynamite. And now he's got fucking, you know, no, it was, what well, was Thursday was Thunder. And this is Dynamite. See, his whole thing, he was a fucking Mark. He's still a Mark. But he was a Mark for fucking things named after explosives and or loud noises. 
And now he has to fucking hire Eric Bischoff just once to have him come out on the show. And that's the one veteran that you should probably stay away from on this program for the joke that writes itself, which is why I did it. Well, yeah, he was the guy that fucking bankrupted the company. He was on his network 20 years ago. So you bring him back. That's too close to the fucking bone. So that's why I, I didn't say Bischoff wasn't a good performer, but why do why open yourself up to that fucking joke here? But beyond that, I'm, you know, I'm, I think it's disappointing with Jericho for different reasons than you do probably, but, you know, he was a serious heel when AEW started. He was great. He was. Remember, he was. He was trying to be serious. He was great. The inner circle around him, it was great. He was so good as a serious heel. And then starting with that Matt Hardy feud and then the football field match. And now this Orange Cassidy program. And the drones and the oranges and the fucking juice and the it's just he's gone to shit. He's doing bad comedy and bad shtick, and it's just not entertaining to me. And there's a lot of other people out there. Let's say it. They got the best ratings they've had since before the pandemic for this episode. There's a lot of people who say, oh, this is a great segment. You know what? This is your life, The Rock. <laughs> got better numbers than any segment in Raw history, and it was one of the worst unwatchable pieces of shit yeah. in the history of wrestling. And Shit Stain still thinks it was a highlight. That's how far gone he was. It was awful. I watched it live as it happened. You kept waiting for something to happen. Nothing happened. It sucked. It did better numbers than anything else. This Orange Cassidy Jericho feud just isn't doing it for me. Chris Jericho has just become, he's become mid-card comedy Chris Jericho again, which is pretty disappointing, all things considered. Yeah. Orange Cassidy, I mean, like you said, it was pre, he clearly memorized a bunch of things for a question that had no place being there except to set up well, that why does that? Why does every supposed grown adult man in the business now sound like a girl? I sound like goddamn James Earl Jones next to these fucking high-pitched little squealy sissy fucks. Well, what the fuck? Well, Mr. Jones, I can't answer that question. But <sighs> no, this segment didn't do it for me. This is the second presidential spoof on this episode. Just garbage. It would fit perfectly on Monday Night Raw within the last 15 years. It does not belong on AEW. We're not, I'm going to stop making jokes about it being sports-based wrestling. That was something they sold everyone a bill of goods. That wasn't in any way their intentions. It was this kind of stuff. Young Bucks level comedy. Yeah. See? It's, and you I were right, was, you were right, you were right. From the start. To, you were right not the to start, take the deal. Sports-based presentation, my ass, when it came out of his mouth. Well, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. Okay, right then. There you go. No. So that's, that's like fucking hiring goddamn Richard Simmons and, and fucking Anita Ekberg to fucking run the National Football League. Try to find some more two unsuited people to run a football league than Richard Simmons and Anita Ekberg, I'll tell you. No, you were right. Look, it would have been easy money, but it would have been the hardest money you ever earned in your life in a lot of ways. <laughs> you were you made the right decision. This is just not good. I wouldn't have been able to pay my bill, my bail money with, with, uh, <laughs> right. for fucking attacking some of these people, beating them with a stick. Anyway, 